Okay, hello everybody. Um, I'm glad to be here, in particular in person, and I'd like to thank you, to, to thank uh, the uh, organizers, especially Ariel, <clears throat> for giving the opportunity to be here. Okay, I would talk to you about um, trajectory and isotropy observed in the uh, experiment of the AFM tip over a perfect crystalline um, surface. Uh, it was an interesting <clears throat> observation in uh, laboratory, um, and then I uh, did some simulation to, exp to, to help to explain what's happening there. Um, perhaps it's too late uh, to go to some introductory things like this in the last day of this four-day uh, conference, but let me mention that uh, we deal with friction in everyday life. In some cases, we need to um, increase friction. In some cases, we need to decrease or remove friction completely. Uh, in other words, uh, we would like to control friction. And to control the friction, we need um, to have a better understanding of friction. And better understanding, perhaps, means um, understanding the friction in the most fundamental length scale, that is in atomic scale. So uh, there is uh, some hope to scale up what we have in atomic scale for friction, superlipricity, wear, and tribology in uh, overall uh, to macroscopic scales. OK. <clears throat> um, and there is a, uh, a very important uh, number actual here. Uh, almost uh, one third of the energy in a vehicle is um, wasted as heat just because of uh, not good control on the friction right now. So it's very important to um, have a, a complete control on friction if it is possible. Anyways, uh, friction um, um, has a new um, actual family. Uh, as soon as atomic force microscopy was invented in 1986. Then um, we understood friction also at atomic scale. Uh, you have um, heard so many things about atomic friction, and almost everybody here, I think, is familiar with atomic force microscopy. And um, for friction, uh, you need to measure uh, the lateral force in atomic force microscopy. So we have uh, a nanotribology uh, just uh, next to the uh, conventional tribology in macroscopic scale. <clears throat> um, I, I would like to um, mention that uh, there are so many similarities, not similarities, um, analogy actually, between macroscopic and microscopic uh, friction. For example, when you draw uh, a line with a pen on a piece of paper or um, with a piece of chalk here on the blackboard, um, it's very similar to what happens when the tip of an atomic force microscope is sliding over an atomic surface. It's almost clear. Uh, when you push a box on the table, there is some analogy in atomic scale. You can push um, absorb it on atomic surfaces by atomic force uh, microscopy tip, and so, uh, so many other analogies can be found. But it does not mean that macroscopic and microscopic frictions are the same. There are some apparent similarities, but uh, they are actually um, completely different things, I, I would say. For example, um, you have here uh, uh, during the, uh, the last year and uh, last uh, days here that the friction in uh, microscopic scale depends on velocity, but in uh, macroscopic scale, uh, for a rather large uh, wide of uh, wide range of velocities, uh, the velocity uh, does not de uh, affect the friction. So I mean, um, microscopic and, and, and uh, macroscopic friction are not actually the same thing. Um, but anyways, uh, in both cases, or when one slider is going or is moving uh, on a surface, um, there is some opposite force, which is called uh, friction in both cases. Uh, what I'm focusing in this um, talk is uh, uh, 
uh, dependence of the slide, uh, uh, of the friction on the slide interaction. And if I am fast enough, I would also mention uh, something else which uh, uh, actually extends uh, an empirical law in macroscopic to microscopic part. I'm not sure that I will be fast enough to go to that. Anyways, the main um, topic of uh, this talk is related to an experimental observation uh, uh, which was reported by uh, Fessler. Fessler was uh, a PhD student in Basel when, one, uh, when I was also a PhD student there. And uh, he got some uh, very nice experiments. <coughs> um, he put the uh, silicon tip of AFM uh, and an uh, NACL001 surface and measured the friction force along uh, direction, very precisely directions actually, and um, found that uh, there is uh, some uh, asymmetry actually between uh, equivalent directions. Um, one knows that, uh, for example, <coughs> moving along this direction should be different from moving along this direction. But uh, along B and C, uh, one would expect uh, perhaps identical uh, forces. Uh, what Fessler uh, showed was that uh, actually these crystallographically identical uh, directions may show different uh, frictions, and it was very interesting. Uh, the um, data here are the experimental data that show that uh, with respect to this 45 degrees, there is some asymmetry. And it was the first questions that uh, we were thinking how to answer it. Uh, the second question, uh, which was also interesting for us, was <coughs> uh, the asymmetry observed in dissipation. Uh, this is also an experimental result. Uh, you can see the uh, friction maps here over the same uh, surface, that is uh, NACL surface, along uh, 100 direction. Uh, the left panel shows uh, forward scanning. Uh, the panel on the right is uh, 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 friction force along the same scanning line, but in backward direction. So the only difference between left and right panel is the direction of the motion of the tip. So perhaps one expect that um, in both directions, uh, the dissipation should be the same. But uh, uh, Gregor showed that, uh, actually as is seen in this profile, in this 2D profile, the black one is for uh, forward, the red one is for the backward, and this panel is for line number one. Um, the direction of the sliding is important and the dissipation differs in forward and backward. And it is not by accident. There are so many scanning lines that show this asymmetry. It's the second interesting question. <clears throat> okay. And also um, a, a third one, uh, which is perhaps related to the <coughs> various two ones, <coughs> was the asymmetry of tip trajectory. Gregor was able, I don't know how, he was able to detect the trajectory of the uh, apex of the um, uh, friction <coughs> force microscopy tip and detected that uh, once the tip is uh, moving along one <coughs> scanning line, um, it may happen that uh, it moves along its stride um, line actually from one side to the other side or it can do a zigzag motion, but the most interesting thing is that the combination of forward and backward uh, profiles uh, may be very different uh, along different scanning lines. Uh, there are five uh, different situations here. <coughs> um, line number zero <coughs> um, corresponds to this panel here, to this panel A, I would say. You can see that line number zero, forward and backward, uh, motion uh, led to uh, stride motion of the tip apex, but along number one, <coughs> along line number one, the forward uh, scanning happens along a stride line, but in the backward uh, motion, it goes to a zigzag one. And number two shows a zigzag, <coughs> zigzag motion, 
uh, line number uh, four shows zigzag straight one, and line number five shows zigzag zigzag, but uh, in two different, um, actually, uh, side um, directions of the uh, scanning line. And it was uh, somehow mysterious is what's happening here and why um, one should see this asymmetry uh, in the um, <clears throat> tip trajectory. So <clears throat> uh, we started to think about how to explain it. Of course, uh, PT model is the basic model for friction explanation. And uh, you have heard so much about it, so I'm not going to go to the details here. Um, a single particle is moving at some constant uh, velocity over a corrugated surface, which is presented by a simple sinusoidal uh, <clears throat> potential. And then uh, so many interesting uh, observations and, ex and experiments can be explained by this simple PT model. But what about this new observation? Of course, it cannot explain it. <clears throat> there is um, um, a number of extensions to this PT model. For example, one can ex uh, extend it to two dimensional, as is schematically shown here. Uh, the one dimensional PT model can be extended to two dimension. Also, <clears throat> temperature uh, has not to be zero. One can do the same uh, with finite temperature. And these extensions are very successful to explain so many different observations and experiments, including double slip zigzag pass. But however, <clears throat> the asymmetric forward and backward um, passes cannot be still um, explained with this um, still simple PT model. Because there is, uh, in principle, no symmetry in this uh, model. OK. So we came up with um, <clears throat> some proposal. The proposal was that uh, we should use a <clears throat> uh, more realistic tip apex in simulation. And the tip here uh, is a model tip, uh, which is uh, not very simply get, actually. We got it from Alirza Gassemi, who did so many uh, calculations and apex of silicon tips to find the most favorable um, apex configurations uh, uh, from uh, sophisticated computations um, the, to get the global minimum energy uh, of the potential energy surfaces of these clusters. Uh, the topmost layer uh, is in crystallographic positions, <clears throat> but the apex is uh, relaxed to get the amorphous structure, which is actually happened. Uh, which happens in reality also. So I put this <clears throat> nanotip over the NACL uh, surface and move it along the uh, crystallographic directions uh, and sampled <clears throat> the potential energy over something like um, 400 data points and interpolated the, the potential energy to get the uh, um, DFT, actually interpolated potential energy, which describes the tip sample interaction. So we believe that the asymmetry, which is uh, shown uh, in this apex, should explain somehow the asymmetry saw in the uh, experiment. <laughs> Let me uh, um, escape some details of the computations. Only let me mention that this uh, thin um, line shows the um, simple sinusoidal potential, but our DFT interpolated potential shows some deviation from that, as this tiny uh, deviation is enough to uh, actually describe uh, the asymmetries which is observed in experiment. So we extended the PT model to two and also to three dimensions, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, use this um, interpolated potential. And uh, let me show you some results. Perhaps the most uh, important results are not these ones. Uh, let me go to, yeah, the three questions that we are looking for the answers of them. Uh, first, the, the last question was, uh, what is the origin of this tip at trajectory asymmetry? Uh, from this asymmetric potential, which is obtained from asymmetric tip apex, uh, 
uh, we saw this uh, simulation results in, at the bottom. You can see that <coughs> um, you can f always find some trajectories, some um, scanning lines on which the tip <coughs> um, trajectory on forward and backward are not identical. Uh, I would say except that the, the most trivial one uh, that is uh, a, stride, a stride in both directions, all four others can be reproduced by this kind of simulation. So, so far, uh, we assign this asymmetry in tip trajectory to the asymmetry of tip apex. What about the other two questions? Uh, we also <coughs> uh, was interested to know what's the mechanism of uh, asymmetric dissipations. You can see here in 2D profiles in particular that uh, forward and backward are not identical, that um, <clears throat> uh, first row is experiment, where similar results can be obtained from simulations with this um, new potential. So again, the dissipation can be uh, perhaps assigned to this asymmetry of the apex. Uh, <clears throat> okay, there are some uh, more results here. For example, if you look at the zoom in uh, view of this uh, box here, you can see that uh, the tip trajectory is more pronounced here. It means that the tip Apex um, actually spends more time here than here. So <clears throat> the uh, forward direction is not actually uh, where it's um, symmetric and regular. And the situation is different in backward. <clears throat> uh, but the first question was the anisotropy in friction coefficient. Uh, we actually are not um, able to capture this uh, quantitatively. But uh, <clears throat> um, there is some asymmetry. This um, small and uh, large spheres show uh, the mirror reflected with respect to this line. So there is some kind of anisotropy, but um, it's much smaller than uh, the experimental observation. We assign it perhaps to the asymmetry also in the macroscopic body of the tip, which we were not able to include in our uh, simulation. Okay. We are planning to extend it to <clears throat> uh, some other examples. For example, a, chemi a chemist a colleague of mine is doing some calculations on this. And uh, if we are uh, successful this way, we would uh, replace the FK model with the PT model, but with an DFT potential energies. OK, I would like to uh, acknowledge uh, my collaborators with whom I have um, friction full <laughs> and fully dissipative collaborations with them. <laughs> uh, area, especially here, some people in Basel and some people in Tehran. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ali. <laughs> very clear talk. Questions? Hi, uh, thanks. Very nice uh, talk. Um, I was wondering, maybe it's a detail that I missed, but for the tip on the um, no, NACL, uh, what is the, ro the, the rotation of the tip? Like, did you did some uh, calculation with a different orientation? Just to understand when this anisotropy in the... Oh. Good question, but I think the answer is somehow trivial, yeah? Because the tip apex is um, amorph. It's not crystalline. So if you change it, you, you would see different results. But I would expect that forward and backward directions would be different anyway. Okay, but if it's amorph, then like you did some more realization of this amorphous tip to get some statistics. For silicon, it's, it, it could be amorph anyway, yeah? Mm -hmm. Even in reality. Okay. But with metallic tips, it would be crystalline. And, yeah. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for the talk. I was wondering if you could do something inversely, like from the, like, in a stick, a stick slip real uh, experimental image, you can uh, reconstruct the shape of the tip? Um, actually, it's very difficult because the tip structure is not fixed. During the experiment and also simulation, the tip apex structure would change during the time. And yeah, the, uh, it's not a good uh, way, I would say, that uh, to detect the tip structure from this kind of simulation. More questions? Okay. Uh, online? Yes? Okay. 
Yes, well. Uh, hello. Yeah. So I brought my question uh, from the chat. So I'm interested uh, how the distance is between the tip and the surface when you perform the big DFT data uh, for fitting uh, potential on. Yeah. I so prefer, yeah, not to stop sharing, but I, I had some uh, figures, some plot of uh, tip sample separations. Uh, it starts from uh, something like um, half an angestrom, which is uh, completely pushed to something like three angestrom. Uh, is it your question or not? Or you yes, it is. Yeah, whether, okay. whether the interaction, so the interaction uh, potential should depend on the load. And this load yes. should be in, uh, expressed as the distance of the tip to the surface. Yeah, yeah. We did it actually in different tip heights, which means different loads. And I showed only uh, a typical result for that. For a range of uh, separations, we can see uh, such a behavior. Okay, nice hearing from you, Andres. Mm. Uh, more questions? Thanks. Right. Welcome. More questions? I think we are, then we are done. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.